as we gather today to celebrate the liturgy of the second Sunday in Ordinary Time, our Gospel reading provides us with an insight into the faith journey of John the Baptist. Last week when we gathered, we celebrated the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord that brought to a conclusion the Christmas season, and then on Monday we began ordinary time, a time of the liturgical year that lasts for 33 weeks. Last week we read from the Gospel of Matthew. That's what we will do for most of this year, except for today we're reading from the Gospel of St. John. In the first chapter of St. John, John the Evangelist tells us about John the Baptist journey of conversion and faith. In the, chapter, in the verses just before today's gospel reading, John has been baptizing, he's been preaching and proclaiming repentance, and lots of people are listening to his call, listening to his proclamation, and being baptized by John. And because there are so many responding to John's invitation to repentance, some ask him, are you the one? Are you the one we've been waiting for, anticipating, praying for? And John tells him, I'm not the one. I'm simply a voice crying out in the desert, make way the the, way the the way of the Lord. For there's someone coming after me who is greater than I am. In today's verse, John the Baptist sees Jesus coming. And he tells and proclaims to those around him, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And after that profession of faith, John the Baptist continues to tell those around him, I didn't know at first who that one would be, but I know he ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. That was the reason why I came. I came to prepare his way. But as I was doing so, I still wasn't sure exactly who he was until the day I baptized him in the River Jordan. For when I baptized him, I saw the Spirit of God come and rest upon him. And I remembered what was revealed to me. When you see the Spirit come down upon the one you baptize and remain, that is the one. And so John concludes by saying, I truly have come to believe that he is the Son of God. Now, if we would continue in John's Gospel, we would hear the word saying, the next day, John is with two of his disciples, and once again, Jesus passes by, and John says, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And the two disciples who had been with John for a long time leave John permanently and follow Jesus. But that's okay with John. He didn't get upset because he knew it wasn't about him. He was there simply to prepare, to make the way for the coming of the Lord, Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Not only in our gospel reading today do we have an insight into the faith journey of John the Baptist, we also have an insight into who Jesus is, what Jesus is all about. In that simple statement of faith, the Lamb of, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Lamb. In Jewish life, in Jewish faith, in the practice of their faith, 
the lamb played a very important role and became a very important symbol. Remember, it was the blood of the lamb sprinkled over the doorpost that told the angel of death to pass over in Egypt so that the people could be led free. It was a lamb who was sacrificed in many of their worship services to somehow remind them that their sins had been forgiven. And the lamb, that sacrificial lamb, became that symbol that God had forgiven them always and forever. And now John the Baptist is saying, Jesus is the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God the one who will free all people from their sins because he will die. He will be sacrificed. He will live out and become that suffering servant that we heard in our first reading from the prophet Isaiah. Jesus is the Lamb of God, and by his death, he will set people free of their sins. Which people? not just the Jewish people, not just those people who came, would come to believe in him as Lord and Savior, but listen to the words of John the Baptist. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It's important for us to remember that statement because at every Eucharist we hear it just before we receive Holy Communion. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Every Mass, you and I acknowledge that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I ask you and myself tonight, do we believe that? Some of you might be thinking, which part? The whole thing that he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. See, God's love, God's forgiveness, God's salvation is inclusive. No one, no one is left out. All have been saved by the blood of the Lamb. All are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. And so the challenge for us, as we listen to who Jesus is and what Jesus is all about, is that you and I need to allow the Lamb of God to touch our hearts, to transform our hearts, so that you and I become less exclusive in our understanding and notion of who God is and who he works for, and become more inclusive. It isn't amazing, many of us, including myself, remember my story of Tommy Bishop, my neighbor in Indianapolis, nice guy. We had lots of fun together sitting in his maple tree in front of the front yard, but I felt sorry for Tommy Bishop because he and his parents were Methodist. <laughs> and back there in the 50s, I was taught, at least I thought I was taught, that only Catholics got to heaven. See, so I was also exclusive at that time. Fortunately, God transformed my heart and I become much more inclusive, although I still have moments every once in a while <laughs> wondering if he or she or they are deserving of God's salvation, love, and forgiveness. But today's gospel calls us that we cannot be people who somehow limit God's love, God's care, God's salvation. To do so would negate today's gospel. To do so would negate that profession of faith that John the Baptist made 2,000 years ago. To do so would negate what you and I profess every time we prepare to receive our blessed Lord and Holy Communion when we say, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. And so as we receive our blessed Lord in communion, let us ask the Lord to change our hearts, to transform our hearts, to realize that he came for everyone. 
And because he came for everyone, you and I must be concerned for and with and about everyone. Not just the people we like. Not just the people we get along with. Not like, just like the people that look like us or speak like us or live like us. No, we've got to be concerned with everyone. Everyone. Because that's who God is. That's who Jesus, his son, is all about. That's what the Holy Spirit calls us to be. People who say God is love. And God loves everyone. And desires that they be with him forever in his eternal kingdom of heaven.